feel the heat in here. Soapy for daddy? Yeah, front end went up pretty high. It sink. did. So we uh, we did our part to uh, call the cicada population in the yeah. Midwest. <laughs> um, I think I counted 28 on the windshield. Okay. And then I probably another half dozen like down on the nose and stuff. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I gotta wash the windshield. I have one of these telescoping poles. Very handy because most gas stations don't have long enough poles to reach these. Um, and we have co-opted Ben's uh, toy box for uh, so I can have soapy water. And Ben's helping with his new toy. Very helpful. Actually, it actually is. I know. Like for once, him playing with water is helpful. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to keep on scrubbing because I want this to be clean before I put the magna shade up. Yes. Um, it's really hot today here in Indiana. Um, you need some water? And it was, no, you may not squirt me. We had a long drive yesterday, like crazy long drive. We stopped at a gas station the slowest. that took forever. And if you've ever filled up one of these before, as you can imagine, if you haven't, it takes a little while. And it takes even longer when you have to wait. And they only let you fill up to how much? At a cap of $75 mm -hmm. per fill, per card swipe. So I had to swipe three times. Because 75 bucks got me like 26 gallons twice. We're gonna put more water in, okay? So I got 26 gallons two times, mm -hmm. and then I had to swipe a third time to top it off. Uh, yeah. So all those numbers are somewhere on the screen. All of our mileage, the amount we've spent, <laughs> the miles per gallon we've been getting, yep. all of that stuff is here on the screen. So we're gonna be sharing all that with you guys. Yeah. Are you also, surprised about the, those numbers? <laughs> <laughs> the cost. Campground costs so uh, far. Uh, uh, ben. We're gonna put that on the screen right now. Uh, so we have paid for Carol's sausage that overnight in Georgia. Yep. And we paid for the KOA we were at last time. Yep, but and not then here. This is zero dollars because it's thousand trails. Thousand trails. Yay. So we will do it. There's a running list somewhere on the screen here, probably up on this filthy <laughs> windshield. Uh, so all of our costs so far. We're not gonna check food and all that because it's different for everybody. Right. Um, but we will do we will do mileage and gas and RV expenses. There you go. Uh, just so you guys know what it takes. Hey guys, Brian from the future here. Uh, we're about halfway through our caravan now. It is uh, about the first week of July and uh, we are working our way back down out of Michigan currently. But since I was working on a video about fuel economy, I wanted to go ahead and jump in and just talk about more than just those first 300 miles. So I've got a little uh, OneNote sheet here that I've been keeping updated on my phone. Every time we stop to get gas, I record where we are, what time it is, how many gallons I got, how much it cost, and how much it was per gallon, and then how many miles we had driven from the previous stop. So you saw just a minute ago that I had driven 321 miles and I got an average of 5.8 miles per gallon. Uh, that sounds awful. Frankly, it, it kind of is. <laughs> That's not great, I mean, it's really not. Uh, but this is a gas motorhome that weighs 22,000 pounds, pulling a four-ish thousand pound car. We're flat towing a Ford C-Max. And we're also running the generator quite a bit. And that includes running the generator while we're driving, while it's stopped at rest stops, and we've done a couple Walmart overnights, and we also run the generator uh, while we're there if it is not a nuisance in those places. Uh, one of them was a nice quiet place, and we did not run the generator. Uh, another one, we were parked between two semi-trucks who had their engines running all night, so we went ahead and ran our generator, uh, I think for about four hours, just to cool it off and keep it cool. Uh, so we do run the generator a lot. And while the generator doesn't explicitly affect your miles per gallon, it is drawing gas from the same tank, so it kind of throws off those numbers. I can definitely tell that the generator is impacting our calculated mileage, because on one of these future drives, it was cloudy the whole time and it was cool, so we didn't run the generator at all, and we got 6.6 .6 miles per gallon. That is an increase of one mile per gallon, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're only getting 5.8, that is almost a 20% increase in mileage. 
So the generator is definitely having an impact. It's been nice driving when it was cloudy. It's still not flat terrain. You know, coming from Florida to Michigan, you in general are going uphill. Uh, that first stretch there was from Florida to Tennessee. You're definitely going up some uh, mountains. You know, lived in Colorado, so they're not big mountains, but they're definitely uphill. There's definitely some grades that you have to deal with. But if you were driving somewhere flat like Florida or Texas or coming down out of the mountains, which we are going to be doing going back towards Florida, basically from this point forward, um, I'm expecting the miles per gallon to go a bit up. And one of the other things that is definitely impacting my mileage is my speed. Obviously, I am in full control of that. Uh, so I have noticed, you know, now that I have calculated this mileage, um, I'm going to drive a bit slower uh, coming down the rest of our trip here. Because uh, on the way up, we were basically taking 75 all the way from Florida up to the Upper Peninsula. And on 75, the speed limit most of the time is 75. Uh, so I was going, uh, the cruise control feels good in this motorhome, right around 71, 72, somewhere in there. It also feels good, and what I mean by that is the gearing feels good and the engine isn't roaring the whole time, right around 63 or 64. So I think for the return trip down to Florida, I am going to reduce my speed to the low 60s and see how that impacts the mileage as well. And speaking of towing, when I drove this motor home from Florida to Colorado last April after we bought it, I was not pulling the car. It did not have anything in it. So it was a lot lighter than it is now. And I was getting about eight miles per gallon on that trip. That was also uphill from Florida to Colorado, uh, kind of in the back half. You know, once you're through Texas, it starts going uphill pretty fast. But not pulling the car definitely, obviously, gets you much better mileage. Now, when you compare this kind of setup, a motorhome with a towed vehicle, to kind of the other popular alternative, which is a truck pulling a fifth wheel, uh, there are other things to factor in. Is that truck going to get better mileage? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it is not uncommon to see 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 miles per gallon while towing a fifth wheel, depending on how heavy it is, of course. Uh, when we had an F-350 pulling a 12,000 pound trailer, I got about 12 and a half to 13 miles per gallon. However, when you get to your campground and you drop off your RV, you're still driving your truck and you're still getting, you know, low to mid teens miles per gallon. We've done a lot of exploring with our car and that car routinely gets 38 to 40 miles per gallon. That is a huge difference compared to a truck. We are basically getting three times the mileage out of that car than we were getting out of our previous truck. So that is also something to factor in. So while it seems like the motorhome is just guzzling gas, and it is, having the car for all of the in-between travel, and we've done quite a lot. We've probably done a thousand miles just on that car in the last month. Uh, we're saving a ton of gas by doing that. If we had a truck and trailer, we would have done that thousand miles with a truck getting, you know, 15-ish miles per gallon. And diesel is also more expensive right now for whatever reason. I, I'm, I'm used to diesel being more in the winter, not in the summer, so it's kind of strange, but it is what it is right now. So not only are we paying less per gallon on gas, we are also getting it way less frequently with the car. So all of this is just a long way of saying that I feel like that 5.8 miles per gallon number is definitely scary. However, having a hybrid car along or some other smaller vehicle along for the in-between travel makes a big difference. Now, if we had had this same setup with our very first trip around the country, we did 18,000 miles, we hit all 48 states, we did a lot of travel in that first, I think it was 18 months. So I don't know if the having the car along on that trip would have been that big of a difference because we averaged only two and a half nights per stop. On this trip, we're doing a week at a time. So we're spending a lot of time in the car exploring and not as much time moving the RV around. So I think for this style of travel, having this setup makes a lot of sense. Now, if you guys have been watching our videos for a little while, you know that we also have a van. We left that back in Florida at our friend's house. Later this year in the fall, we're gonna go on another uh, shorter trip. And we're still trying to figure out whether we want to chase in the van or pull the car again, like we've been doing on this trip. So that's still a discussion we're gonna have in the near future. We're not sure where we fall on that yet. So I'm kind of, we're taking all of this information we're getting from this trip and kind of going to compare it to what would it cost to drive the van behind 
and there's also another consideration of bikes and we got some e-bikes which we're going to talk about very soon uh so these things things are evolving things are changing right things always change the kids are getting bigger we are getting different things we're traveling differently we're going to new places so it, all of this stuff kind of factors in and then we'll make a decision for the next trip and then the trip after that, and then the trip after that. And that's just kind of what the RV life is like for us. It's this constantly evolving, changing thing, and uh, we're really enjoying it, honestly. And we hope you guys are enjoying our videos, too. So I know I kind of jumped in here. We're right in the middle of getting to Indiana in our video. Uh, we are not going to get back to that in this episode. However, in the next two episodes, we will be going to the beautiful city of Cincinnati with very delicious chili, and we're also going to Indianapolis to check out some really cool kids stuff and some stuff for me. So make sure to stay tuned. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. We have a lot more caravan videos to go. And actually our videos from the caravan are going to last long after the caravan returns to Florida on August 1st. So if you want to get a bunch of behind the scenes stuff, go to this URL down here, 5 togocom slash roadrunners. We've been spending a lot of time with Roadrunners on this caravan, as well as sharing stuff almost daily. Uh, videos, photos, live streams, special episodes, blooper reels, all that sort of stuff. So if you want in on that, 5 to gocom slash Roadrunners, you can join this list of awesome people here. And we will see everybody, all of you, in the next episode. Thanks, guys.